This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. You're from the hood, but the streets didn't made you. The educated lame versus the typical, stereotypical Pookie and Ray Ray or Tyrone. Brand new topic for today. This is Woken Red Pill here. Let me know what your thoughts are. Those of you who's new to this video, new to my channel, subscribe, support a brother, share the video, like the video. As I said, and I always say, let me know what you think. Okay? All is welcome. All comments are welcomed. And God bless. Um, I made a few videos in the past for those who might have watched them. Uh, you would understand where this topic is coming from. Some of you could relate to being judged or being misunderstood by other people or other counterparts who are black or who also may be from the hood. You can relate to a lot of things on a real level about the struggles, um, the projects, how it's like to uh, live off of Section 8, people that you knew that lived off of Section 8, um, dealing with, uh, with, with, uh, with bullies, whatever the case may be, right? This depends on your situation. But a lot of people doesn't make it out of the hood when there's also a lot of people who wants to make it out. They mind their business. They leave their house, leave their home, their mama's house, their dad's house, go to work, school, college, and then they go back home, mind their business. They don't get into any drama. They do what they have to do to leave. Some of you may have gotten married and left the, the hood. Some of you may have graduated, left the hood. Some of you may have uh, wanted to venture out or try something different. Or some of you probably wanted to cut ties with the hood altogether and couldn't deal with the drama, couldn't deal with the BS. And it's understandable. Um, there's a lot of cool people that... You would know from the hood who would help you out, who you went to high school with, middle school. In most cases, they end up being bad environments or part of bad situations that a lot of people who are in very, very, very small spaces and they don't have a voice for other people to understand them like that. They want to get out. You know? Now, for everything that I'm saying in the video, I can relate to all of this. There's always those few brothers and sisters who are from the black community who wants nothing to do with hood people, people who are ghetto People who are ratchet, they don't want nothing to do with that lifestyle. They don't want nothing, nothing to do with the, 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 the crime rates involving drugs, gun possessions, so the stereotypes. They don't want nothing to do with it. And a lot of people would label them automatically as, um, oh, you a sellout. You a lame. You're not black enough. You're not pro-black. And in some cases, when they see you have a black husband, a black boyfriend, a black wife, 
all of a sudden they want to respect you, but they want you to help them out at the same time once they view you as their own in their eyes, when they're struggling. I can relate to everything that I've mentioned since the beginning of the video. This topic could get deeper than this. Okay? As you see from the thumbnail in the background, this is typically what people would view the hood as to be. The projects, Section 8 housing, these type of buildings would be on a person's image of what they depict the hood to be like. For those of you who didn't understand and those who passed by it, some people may have judged a lot of people that came from the hood to base them all off of everyone else, especially people who are predominantly black. Because on the media, still to the, till this day, they like to uh, they like to uh, constantly push this false narrative stereotype all the time that a lot of people within our community who are black women men in particular they like to uh, condition themselves and accept this persona to believe that this is what the media wants them to be this is how they would be. And in most cases, the media is right on that, that there are people that are like that. There are people who are drug dealers. There are, there are people who um, who does a lot of stupid things who are in the black community. We all have our bad apples in every race of man. There's bad apples in white communities, Asian. There's bad everywhere. But a lot of black people that I've been around, they seem, in some cases, depending on where they're from, which is especially from the hood, and they grow up to be ratchet, ghetto, sometimes they feel like if another brother is educated, he talks proper, they feel like automatically they think that he's better than them. And that's not a good mindset to always have. The reason why I understand why a lot of people from the hood who came up came up from a, an upbringing, they were ratchet, ghetto, now they want to change their life, or either it's too hard for them to go back to even fix their, their mistakes, that they know in the future, in their position, when they see an educated brother or sister who made it, who made something of themselves in life, who's in a better position than them, they feel a type of way. They feel like that they're inferior to that other brother or sister. So they would shame them and call them all type of names to put them down. And a lot of people from the community, it's the reason why a lot of black people are very diverse and we're not really sticking together and looking out for each other like that. A lot of people from the Asian community are looking out for each other. A lot of people from the Indian community are looking out for each other. A lot of people from different types of ethnicities, you know, Africans are looking out for each other from Africa. There are people, a lot of people from different islands and different cultures and backgrounds other than the United States, are looking out for their own a lot more than a lot of black American people or African Americans on average. I see it, I experienced it, and I actually accepted that this is where we're at. You can't convince a blind man to change or see the things that you see. A lot of people may have a guilty conscience that they want to blame the world on their hate and they look for anything 
to put you down when they're putting themselves down by that hurt. They're only hurting themselves a lot more because once they curse you out, they want to call you all type of names. Then they sit back and look at, look at themselves as I'm a failure. I didn't make it out the hood. I'm from the hood. I, cho- I chose to, uh, to do all the horrible things. I chose all those terrible, bad decisions. I chose to be a baby mom. I chose to live in the Section 8. I chose to not finish high school. I chose all these type of bad decisions, horrible decisions. And I want to blame another brother or a sister for my own community of my own faults. So I could feed my own ego to make my, myself feel better about my position when I'm no better either. In the end of the day, it only leads to more depression and it only leads to more chaos. This is why you see a lot of crime rates happen when they call it black on black crime. It's, it, it died down drastically because a lot of people are not really going out like that. A lot of people are more involved with the quarantine news during during this pandemic. But a lot of us also keep in mind that we got to stick together during times like this. And a lot of people are not looking out for one another like that. People are very quick to wipe out the shelves of toilet paper, paper towels, baby wipes next thing you know god forbid it might be even food i live in upstate new york i'm originally from brooklyn new york grew up in brownsville born and raised i'm from the hood i completely understand how it's like to struggle to go through bad times to go through idiots punks People who are in gangs and groups who thinks they're tough when they're with their friends and when they're alone, there ain't nothing that they could do to hurt you. Once the cops is around, they want to run off. Once someone bigger than them comes along and they're by themselves, they want to run off. But when it comes down to their friends, persuading them, they feel like acting tough and acting hood is masculine and that's another thing there's a lot of sisters who view that masculinity as gold as a trophy and for brothers it's the other way around this is but this is why you see so much dysfunction within the black community we have a culture we have a history and at the same time on the media today in 2020 there's still a lot of black people within the community that still does not know how to get along, still wants to argue with the with one another, still want to call you a sellout. There's the ones that are swirlers that feel like they made it somewhere with a person of another race, and all of a sudden they think they're better than other people when it makes them look even more bad themselves. And this is my view. I'm not attacking SYSBM. I'm not attacking any brother who is in an interracial relationship. I have no hate here. But the only issue that I agree with a lot of people say about these swirlers or interracial couples, don't bash your own. Don't feel like you won the, the Grammy that you got somewhere in life with being with someone of another race. It does not matter. And in most cases, that person that you're with, they're probably fetishizing us or they're fetishizing you or they're using you. People got to be honest with themselves. What is the point in having hate in our own culture for people that made it? Other cultures, you don't hear... The Chinese, Asian community, Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, Indians. You don't hear uh, Hispanics, Latinos. You don't hear none of them uh, get bitter, hateful. 
the media, of course, it conditions us. But from what I see within my own race of the black community, we're always going to be seen in the bottom of the barrel to the media eyes and the world because of what we're constantly portraying on the media to be used against us. And I blame a lot of single parents and irresponsible parents. It's not just the women's fault. It's also men's fault. I'm not picking any sides here. I'm not caping for anybody. As I said in my last videos, I'm not simping for nobody. I'm being honest. Two sides of the same coin that does wrong is still wrong. A lot of things in the black community is definitely black words. What's seen as bad is good, and what's good is bad. That makes no sense. But it changes once these type of people get older. There are people who have over five, six different baby daddies, and they are very entitled to the type of person that they want, that they have very high standards, that are very unrealistic, and they get bitter and angry when they're alone. These type of people exist within the black community. It just, it makes me think and question life somehow. Being a black man, such as myself, I understand a lot of people and a lot of other men of different races and backgrounds, they're not, gonna, they're not going to understand where I'm coming from. They're not going to understand if they're in my shoes. But one thing I know who would understand me the most is someone who also came from the hood, but they didn't let they didn't uh they didn't grow up in the streets to be street smart or act like the Pookie and Ray Ray stereotype that is always depicted in the in the media, like hip hop videos, the music the media, all these negative lights, these negative stereotypes. Why do you want to put yourself down because the world tells you so, but then you don't realize that it's only a, a controlling mechanism to bring us down even a lot more to stay where we're at. This is why a lot of cultures and peoples of different backgrounds, they don't like to see another brother make it. They automatically think, that you cheated or um, you were the ex-felon. They want to look at every single little thing, any evidence to, to uh, put you in your place. So they could just quickly say, hey, I told you so. All black people are the same. This is how some people in reality thinks. A lot of people don't realize how deeply conditioned they are that they become the same thing that they hate, they become the same thing that people's society depicts on, on the media. Who wants to be a depiction and a stereotype rather than being someone that actually wants to be somebody in life to survive and make it? No one wants to die at a young age on the streets just to prove that, that they're uh, protecting the hood or their pride. All of that is, is wasteful. We're never going to move anywhere from always having that type of mindset. There's no burden or weight on my shoulders unless it, if it's my own family. I have a few nephews who, um, who have that hood mentality mindset. And look, it's no love lost to them. I always pray for them and I always wish them the best. I have no hate towards black people at all as a whole in america i i love my culture i love everything about it i accepted that as i love myself but the only issue i have is when a lot of brothers especially black men that are in america they are quick to question me based off how i speak how i talk how i carry myself Either I'm 
smart to them either. They think I'm, I'm from a, a different state. I grew up in a, in a white neighborhood. I, I, you talk white. All these negative things that comes out from these brothers' mouths. And there are some sisters who does it too. And that is a big, big, big problem. We're focusing too much on the negative. And I'm not saying we as a whole. There are a lot of people within the black community that focuses too much on the negative because the negative is what's always being portrayed the most. On if all you see is negative and you never choose to see the positive that is coming from the black community, it makes you be negative as well. It makes you deeply condition that negativity that when you see something good from a black woman or a black man, you're not used to that. And there's a lot of brothers and sisters within the black race that actually think like that. They're not used to kindness. They're not used to people being nice, being good, talking proper. They automatically think of the white man. You can't constantly have this mindset. You are at fault if you're in the position that you're at where you're worrying about other people rather than changing your life and your situation. There's a lot of important things that are more important in life to think about, especially during these times that we're living in. I'll continue to be that educated lame, the guy who speaks proper, the guy who has a black wife, who's pro-black, who has black kids. I'll continue to be that guy. Judge yourself before you judge one another. That's the issue that a lot of people have within the black community. Instead of being supportive, we're being negative. Then they wonder why a lot of people move away from the black community and acts away towards a lot of black people in general. The damage is done, but it could be undone when it starts with you. You have to choose to be that change to make a better person out of yourself. It's no one else's fault that you left the hood, but the hood is still in you. And you want to judge another brother for being the lame. A lot of you want to, want to judge another brother for being the lame, for, for being the lame, being educated, smart, want to stay out of trouble. You want to put someone like that down because that's all you're used to doing. That hurt is going to continue to be your hurt if you allow it to manifest in your life and your mind, in your soul, your spirit. That is going to always continue to haunt you because you choose and allowed it to manifest in your life deeply that you become that negative person. And there's a lot of people who are in the black community who thinks that way. They're a slave to their own sanity. That is very, very, very depressing to go through that. To have that mindset, don't you want to just break out of that and be free from that and actually be the opposite of what you want to be in life? What's good is, and is good and what's bad should always be bad. People also got to get their minds straight or we're going to always continue to be where we're at this is why there's so much division within the black community and so much hate so much swirling because of what the media is doing to us to damage us completely and it's it's allowing a lot of people from our our background to to accept this but they don't realize a lot of cases some of those individuals are only hurting themselves. They're not hurting anybody else. This is Welcome to Put Her. Peace out. Let me know what you think.